So here is another Christian Matriarchy video. Today is Saturday, August 22nd. Um, I just, oh, say hi. Bizu. Chikla wea chai chiti. It's Wima. Remember Bizu? Wima Haley. Right? Wima Haley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I just had a, um, another big satanic attack. Um, and this was an issue I had with my husband and I. Um, and right now I'm at the river because I had to go think about it. And it didn't occur to me until I got here and spent some time in prayer with Bizu and was able to just commune with nature and see it in a higher perspective. And so I had some beautiful things happen recently where I had a dream that my husband and I had a baby. We never wanted kids, but you know, whenever you dream about a baby, it's usually a good omen. So I took it as a positive sign. That's Bizu talking, stop it Bizu, he's loud. So I took that as a positive sign. Um, oh, my necklace from Troll Binda, thank you. Um, I took that as a positive sign. So I had that happen. I had some other interesting dreams where I had that um, message come to me. I am a dodecahedron right before I woke up. It was like a month ago. And so I've been having some really amazing things happen and some new opportunities I just found out about. And um, really feeling good about stuff, like in a good place too, mentally, um, even though financially I'm really not doing well. Um, I feel very hopeful nonetheless, and I feel very inspired right now. I'm very in good spirits, I'm very blessed. And um, you know, my husband just came to me, we've been fighting the last couple of days, and he just told me something shocking. Um, it wasn't cheating or anything like that. Um, it was just something that I it was really at a left field and I had to look back um, and there was just so much emotion. He's a very emotional anyways, but there was a lot of, you know, violence that came through him, which I usually let him express because, you know, I knew he needs to express and I do too. So, you know, a lot of punching and stuff like that and um, not me, but just like the, um, was punching this wood thing but anyways that's not the problem I don't care about that but anyways I just got here to the river and I just realized like I'm doubting my faith again I'm gonna walk this walk and this Christian matriarchy which I believe in a hundred percent and I believe I've been preparing for this my entire life um, having many miracles along the way that pointed me to this um, and if this is truly what it is and what's been revealed to me, not just in a playful mystical way, but in, in a, a reality aligning way, which puzzles myself even when I say that, um, I'm seeing it when I see that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and darkness and high places. And when I see that and I see my husband, um, I can see him as a tool right now, as a, a demon. And, you know, I see that a demon's working through him to attack me. Just like how it's happened with that dude that attacked me many times. Many dudes have attacked me in my life. Many people have attacked me. People have gotten very physical with me. Like, I bring violence out in people. And that's part of my sadomasochism issue that I'm you know, most all recovered from, but um, it's something that I'm aware of and something that I really try to, uh, you know, respect and try to keep, you know, make sure I make the right decisions. Stop it, these are your so, so loud. He's enjoying the sunset and the conversation, right, buddy? Um, so, I'm gonna talk over here then a little. So anyways, um, 
So that's where I'm at right now with that. I'm gonna give this to Christ and I've already prayed about it. I laid it at his feet. Um, and I'm also taking responsibility for it myself and understanding that um, too much has been given and much is expected and I am not a child anymore. I've been playing this game, I'm not playing this game, but this has been my reality my whole life being attacked like this. Um, and people really um, just release around me. And it's like, ergonomically, I feel good about that because I I appreciate those, those releases and I give people a big space for that. Um, and by doing that, I also kind of swallow some of my own self-respect, which I'm, you know, it's a balance I've been learning myself. But honestly, um, If, I, if I'm tapping into the Divine Mother, and I was able to reach out to my sister as a Divine Mother recently, and she's 10 years older than me and has been actually really, truly a, a mother figure to me. Um, if, I'm, if I'm supposed to access this Divine Feminine, this Mother of God within me, um, I must also contend with making that a reality and actively pursuing that like in the way I've given older women even too much leeway in my life. How recently when I was roofied, the woman who had connected me with it was 60 and I had always called her the Santa Madre, always given her a big room of respect and also um, appreciation, not that she shouldn't have, but also with the trusting with her being an older woman and trusting her to have my best interests. Just like I did with a 60 year old man. I actually accepted him as a sacred female because he was so homosexual in his presentation and everybody treated him that way. And I felt bad for him because I felt like whether he came out or not, he I saw him to be a very loving, good person. And I wanted to recognize that in him and I paid a high price no good deed comes unpunished because honestly he wasn't worthy of all of that part of it is though he did lie he said he was a medical doctor he wasn't um and i knew he was lying about a lot of stuff but honestly again um me trying to rationalize it i thought oh you know like he's lost a lot in his life he he feels like he has to overcompensate by lying um i see people lying i've done it before i like to call it misspeaking um, because it's, when you say you misspoke, you're basically not as conscious of it, realizing it's a lie. So, yeah, that's basically, I gave him a lot of leeway there, and then he took advantage of it, and actually that's what this woman did too. This woman, um, she just took... Anyways, uh, this woman whom I trusted left me with that other woman who roofied me and tried to rape me. And, you know, I'm one of those people that likes to try to take as much responsibility as I can. But it just proved to me the triple goddess ascension message, which is as much as I resonate with people my own age, all my ages. I know through my organomy therapy and my organomy study and just in my own personal path, spiritual path, that I don't resonate with a lot of people on the same level and I end up reaching um, on different frequencies that say that I shouldn't or over lowering my standards, um, my moral standards or even my safety standards to try to accommodate and it's always come back to hurt me and i'm only recently and i'm 45 realizing like it's issues i have with time because i spend too much time with people i'm afraid to let go i'm afraid to disconnect so once i connect then i can't disconnect and that's even if i'm at somebody's house for 10 minutes um or if i am at uh somebody's house for an hour like i can't manage my time well and they struggle with that and I've treated it very mystically but actually it's 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 not 
it's mystical in a way that allows me to experience time and space in a different way, which I think helps me spiritually. But non-mystically, mechanically speaking, in an ergonomic sense, um, it has totally to do with my early childhood trauma and the way I disassociate myself or I overly, I'm overly conscious in one area and then I block out everything else or you know, different ways that I block accurately and I stare off in the moment. Like I used to be very ADD. Sometimes I'm ADHD because I'm trying to manage my anxiety by being in the move, which is something I've sort of kind of conquered the last two years. Um, it's just, it's brought up the issues of why I've gotten attacked and it's gotten to the point where people get so violent with me. And that's a big issue where I ignore the signs. The signs are right there. Even this woman that roofied me, um, when she greeted me and she said that she thought I was 90 years old and I knew she knew I wasn't and I had already met her boyfriend when I dropped off the blessing stone, I knew that this woman was, I mean, approaching me with a lie, which made her disingenuous, which later, you know, I'm trying to see, oh, she's lying because she's nervous or maybe she thinks I'm prettier than her. She feels intimidated and she has these character reaction formations she's doing to cope with this awkward moment. So I really try to give that to her. But then at the end of the day, um, there was such a hatred she had towards my femininity and a, such a hatred she had towards my face. She kept saying I had collagen in my face. She kept saying that. At first I said, thank you. But then it was like she was telling my friend, your friend's got collagen in her face. Like it went from being funny and kind of a joke to being like, wow, you know, and then to me being almost three feet and raped, whatever that means um, from this woman. But um, I'm just really on like a platform right now where I feel like something amazing is about to happen. This is a moment for me to have faith and my husband, whose name is actually, you know, like Rock, like I, he's always been a rock to me. I'm getting confirmation. And so I have to rise up to this occasion right now and I have to understand greater is he that is in me than is in the world and we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and that I have to hold these things in my heart and know that no weapon forged against me is going to prosper. No weapon's been thrown at me, but now I'm going to take it. And that's when I use the Christ consciousness to look at it for what it is, unpeel the pain and the neurosis and find the love underneath. But in the process of that, understanding Christ's, work, Christ's teachings about love and the biblical, is not about just smiling and letting people do sick things, and whether they call them evil things or neurotic things, people hurt other people. And I've always paid a high price when I've ignored that. I've always paid a high price when I've ignored that in my life. So I know what I've been called to do, but you have to be very careful with that um, when you're dealing with people, because people can be violent. So anyways, I wanted to share that today and thank you.